Some folks think that we are too emotional when it comes to our praise. We well, just don't take all that preaching. Well, you just don't know what the Bible says. But I will tell you this, when you've been through hell and high water, you stop caring what people think about you. When you've lost everything you have and then God begins to bring it back, you don't care what people think about you. You can be as conservative as you want to be, but when you need a breakthrough in your life, you've got to quit caring what people think of you. Now, if you don't need a breakthrough in your life, you can just sit there like a bump on a log. But let me tell you, when you need a breakthrough, you're going to have to give God some praise. You're going to have to give God a shout. You're going to have to go into the gates with thanksgiving and the courts with praise. I came here to help somebody today. Who am I preaching to in this house? May I say that you have a spiritual enemy that doesn't want you to get excited about the things of God. He loves it when you are passive, when you are timid. He loves it because it really shows a lack of faith. God wants you to get out of the wilderness. He wants you to go into the promises of God. God wants you to be blessed. Tell somebody that. See, God wants you to, to possess the land. And that's not just spiritual territory. God wants you to own your own house. He, see, rent and mortgage are about the same price. God wants you to have your own house, your own property. Can I get a good hallelujah right there? But David was a little shepherd boy, and nobody even knew that David was alive. He was out in the fields tending the sheep, and he was completely overlooked. But when God saw his enthusiasm, it caused God to promote him above his brothers. If you want to get God's attention, you're going to have to get enthusiasm moving inside you. You're going to have to get hot for God. David had a lot of baggage in his life. David did a lot of things wrong, but he knew how to bless his God. He knew how to praise God, and God moved on his behalf. When nobody even knows you are alive, your enthusiasm for the Lord will cause God to see you. When you've been completely overlooked in your life, somebody knows what I'm talking about here. You've been overlooked because of your color. You've been overlooked because of your sex. You've been overlooked for some reason in your life. When you've been completely overlooked in your life, your enthusiasm for the Lord will cause God to bring you to the front of the line. But the word says if you'll put him first, he'll open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that you cannot contain. He says he'll open doors that you cannot open. He'll promote you in places that you would never thought you could be promoted. Even if, even if it's not your personality to be exuberant, there's something about enthusiasm that'll get God's attention. Quit saying it's not your personality and start getting excited about the things of God. You gotta let it all hang out, baby. Touch somebody and tell them, let it all hang out. Get excited about going to church. This is no time to play church. This is time to be the church. Get excited about witnessing to others on your job. Get excited about bringing people to church with you. Get excited about paying your tithes and offerings because you know that God's going to do something for you. He's going to make a blessing in your finances that you cannot believe. God looked at David and he said, this is a man after my own heart. If you want God to be blessed, see, our problem is we're always coming to church looking for God to bless us. We ought to be coming to church looking to be a blessing to God. I lift my hands to you, Master, to bless your name. If you want, to, if you want God to be blessed, you've got to get excited about loving him. You've got you you to tell him how wonderful he is. Let me tell you, if you want your husband to be blessed, you've got to tell him how wonderful he is. If you want your wife to be blessed, you've got to tell her how wonderful she is. And if you want God to be blessed, you've got to open your mouth and tell him how wonderful he is. I'm telling you that David played his harp. He played anointed music in the presence of Saul. And the demons that were running Saul's life had to leave when anointed music came in. See, some folk, when you bring them to church, they can't stand it when this anointing music begins to play. They get uncomfortable. They start getting antsy. They, they can't figure out what's going on because, see, anointed music will stir up devils. 
anointed music will set the captives free. Anointed music will give us give you a shout and a good hallelujah. I'm talking about anointed music will have a good hallelujah bubble out of your mouth and you don't even know where it came from. How could little David defeat Goliath? How could he do it? Goliath, nine and a half, ten foot tall. Now, that's a giant, isn't it? You know, we got some basketball players that seven foot. I'm talking about a nine foot giant. Nine and a half, actually. How could little bitty David defeat this huge giant? He just had a slingshot. It wasn't much. So you think because you don't have much that you can't defeat the giants in your life. But you see, David had a praise that was way beyond his brothers. He had a hallelujah that was way beyond those in his house. You see, when you've got a good praise in your mouth, you don't need much to defeat depression. All you need is a little bitty shout, just a little bitty praise. All you need is a little dance. You don't, you don't need much. Can I get a good hallelujah right here? <laughs> Blind Bartimaeus needed a miracle. And he heard that Jesus was coming his way. He began to cry out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Everybody told him to shut up. But he got louder and he got louder. See, when folk tell you to be quiet, you sometimes you just got to say, wait a minute. You can't help me anyway, but I got a God that can help me. Oh, sometimes when you're going through hell and high water, you've got to have a praise in your mouth that's an unnatural praise. Sometimes you've got to get enthusiastic with your praise. Sometimes you've got to let it all hang out. Ooh, touch somebody and tell them let it all hang out, baby. Let me tell you, if you don't have any problems, then you'll never understand why we praise the Lord with tears running down our faces. See, if you don't have any problems, you'll never understand why we shout like we shout. See, if you're going through some trouble, you've got to get this in your heart that to get to the presence of God, you've got to have a praise in your mouth. I challenge somebody in this room to quit saying, oh, it's not my personality, and begin to magnify the Lord and shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Let me tell you, if you have all the money you need, then you'll never understand why we sacrifice to God like we do. But when your back is against the wall and trouble staring you in the face, that's when you learn to give to God like you've never given before. I dare somebody to believe God. I dare somebody to stand on the word. I dare somebody to shout unto God. <laughs> Wilma Rudolph had polio in both legs as a child. She wore braces, but she had a dream of walking. Is there anybody here in this word today that's got a dream in your life? She had a dream. She used her faith in the Lord, and she ended up making the basketball team in high school. She became aggressive in her faith and eventually won three gold medals for our country. I'm trying to tell you that you cannot be passive if you want to see your miracle come to pass. You're going to have to be aggressive. When somebody gives you a bad report, don't believe the bad report. Believe the promises of God in your life. Hallelujah. Elijah lived in a land that was filled with false prophets. He lived in a land that was filled with astrologers and psychics. He lived in a land where there was doubt and unbelief all around him. But he was enthusiastic about his faith. He told the false prophet, he says, you meet me on top of Mount Carmel. We'll settle this issue once and for all. He said, you call on your gods and I'll call on the name of the Lord and the one that answers, that's the one we'll serve. See, I'm not going to argue with religious folk. I'm just going to say, you call on your God, I'll call on the name of the Lord. The one that answers, that's the one we're going to serve. <laughs> 